Hi, everyone. I'm always excited to do these, com these interviews, these conversations, but this one's very uh, important to me because it's with my longtime friend and colleague, uh, Mary Jo Fishburn. So Mary Jo is a physician practicing in Towson, Maryland. We have traveled together, made cheese together, hiked together. <laughs> I presented in her practice. She's helped me set up a workshop in my home. It's been amazing. It's been an amazing friendship. Um, and Mary Jo is so insightful to talk to because um, she has a unique medical practice. I mean, you have a unique area in medicine that I want you to talk about. Um, you also trained in functional medicine and has recently uh, started integrating genomics into a medical practice. So we're gonna unpack all of this and have a good old conversation. So thanks for taking time, Mary Jo. Oh, my pleasure, Amanda. So your area of specialty as physician is, is unique. Tell us what that is or what your original training was as an MD. Um, I'm mostly interested in musculoskeletal wellness. So my background is physical medicine and rehab. Um, trained a long time ago on that. And um, I've always been interested in how uh, people move, how people live their lives, um, what kind of choices they're making, and how their health influences those choices. So physical medicine and rehab was a great entree into that. And it's given me the opportunity to explore the biomechanics of movement, the um, uh, best way to function to, and I've come to appreciate that through my training in osteopathic manual techniques and acupuncture, which has been great tools for pain management, that uh, you can do great alignment and so forth, but if there's inflammatory issues, if there's nutritional issues, if there's significant lifestyle, chronic stress, then um, it all just, it doesn't gel, it doesn't stick, nothing works. And that's a really a, a great point because uh, quite recently, a lot of physical therapists um, have kind of come into to my world, uh, which I'll come to, but they also, they have the same conclusion. Here they are trying to support their, um, the, the structure of the body or regeneration or uh, realign the, the, the structural physiology of the body. And they said, we can only get so far without nutrition. So they're saying, we need to learn more about nutrition, not that they don't anyway. Um, and it's interesting on the last broadcast I did, uh, it was separate from these DNA chats. You know, I was actually talking so much about this idea that, you know, we go to our dentist every year. Maybe we're going to do a wellness check with our doctor, maybe. But who does a physical or structural, almost like a physical therapy check, you know, for movement realignment? And, and yet we all know when our back hurts or our hips hurt or something hurts, it's structural and we've never really had the, the training as individuals to know how to fix that. It takes an expert like you to point out it's your glute meads or whatever it is and this is what you can do. Um, that well, was it's also, it's also demystifying. It's looking at what your habits of movement are and how they're exactly. creating tension patterns that are, are not balanced. So the real key is how balanced is your structure? And you know how uh, how adaptable is it? So if you've locked up, you know life is full of opportunities for dings, and um, we might feel a little twinge for a few days, and then we accommodate, right. and that's that's fine. You can function, but at some point you lose the adaptability. The more you lock up, the less adaptable you are. So that's really the background of, you know, the biomechanics of aspect of things, but it's also that movement is critical for life. Exactly. And we tend to forget that we have a very sedentary culture. Of course, we've got extremes of people who love to run a hundred miles, you know, I mean, I've got somebody like that right now in my practice and it's, it's, it's such a, the polar opposite of, of the usual person I see. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's been a whole, I know, and I know this is the area of medicine you practice in, but, you know, having just gone through something personally recently and working with a phenomenal physical therapist to undo these movement patterns and then strengthen your, 
your whatever your your skeleton your muscular skeletal you know being is life-changing you know because you know i cycle and i do a lot of long distance cycling and i start having lower back pain i'm like oh she said no it's your glute me it's here do this <laughs> whatever and uh just amazing so uh, it's it's a fantastic area of medicine but you, what you also said so i know you for that area of medicine but then also going through, uh, you went through functional medicine training so what why was that why did you go that route it was to kind of connect some more dots that? Well, I, I think that I've always had um, the understanding that people will tell you their story. They'll tell you what's going on with them if you take the time to listen to what were the sequence of events in their health history. And um, uh, so when I went to, I the first functional medicine course that I took was sort of a, oh, this is exactly how I think. I look oh. at, at the big picture, I try to figure out what's the underlying root cause of the issues that are going on. And so from a, from a medical perspective, it's not so much a big, um, it's a shift in perspective from organic, like one system pathology to what's the big picture? Mm -hmm. What are the, you know, there we're, we're physiologically this, molecular soup which is why the genomics is so critical and so valuable um, and what are the factors that are influencing whether or not it can work it's kind of amazing that we function at all when you think about it i'm amazed every single day because the more you dig in i love the idea of molecular soup i'm going to hold on to that one very joe fishman molecular soup <laughs> but um you know, it's true. When you understand the biochemistry of the body, it is amazing. We, we are an amazing thing. <laughs> and that everything's firing 24-7 and all these molecules are being moved around the body at lightning speed. And communicating. Somehow, the, you know, at all, there's this, there's this electromagnetic field that we are. There's uh, a number of pathways of, of communication and redundancy so that you know you, you you are sure you're getting the right message but it's it's really pretty rem remarkable that we can go from two gametes a sperm and an egg and develop this incredible complexity yeah same dna see same dna in each cell it's expressed differently and it's all about the relationships of those cells with each other and it's I find it endlessly fascinating. I do too. It's it's mind blowing to me, and it's ex extremely exciting time in in medicine and in nutrition science because the two go together in this field. So so then we'll move on to genomics uh, because uh, this is a field that you were immediately interested in, and then what in the last year or two you said I'm going to bring this into my practice. You know, I what well, what. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm what made very you decide? excited to have it because uh, this has been something I've been really waiting for. Yeah. yeah. And so what made you decide just you knew that, you know, this was a game changer. Or it was a great tool. What was the decision? Well, I mean, I, I started um, exploring what were uh, nutrigenomics and it's, a, it's overwhelming when you try to figure it out yourself. <laughs> and I, I have been really... Um, I, I took uh, a genomics uh, training program and just there's just a lot of biochemistry and, and uh, um, complexity to it all and things that are, are developing and evolving every day. Yeah. Um, and as a clinician, it's hard for me to imagine that I would um, be able to go into, you know, to do the... Um, decoding by myself. So having um, my, what I really appreciate is being able to collaborate with you, Amanda, through the, um, I would call it genomic to table uh, protocol that we have in the office by getting uh, the genomic data from an individual, some functional labs that look at what's happening on a biochemical level rather than what's happening on a a uh, lab uh, database, uh, you know, meaning Western medicine perspective. Right. There's, it, there's often very different kind of, uh, there's a nuance 
about what's happening biochemically that is really useful with a functional medicine uh, lab test. Um, and uh, what's happening clinically, clinically for people. And um, this is a fairly new protocol we have in the office, but we've had a really amazing uh, response. Our first patient uh, is, was a, is a young woman who um, came to me with profound fatigue, horrible joint pain, really immobilized by all of that. Um, and clearly very inflamed, had some thyroid issues, a few other uh, aspects of things. And we, with, uh, in collaboration with you, we decoded her genomics. And she told me that she's 80% improved just by virtue of the nutritional approach, which was, you know, we hadn't even started any of the bio biomechanical approach. Right, because you're trying to so. make one to enable the other. So um, I think I'll just tell, uh, the audience, how we actually work together, because it's unique. So uh, we are not sitting in the same office <laughs> as we work. So um, Mary Jo's practice, they opened up this genome, genomic, genome to table, genomic to table, right? Uh, it's a, uh, basically, it's a service or a product, if you will, that uh, your uh, patients can opt for. And so basically, the DNA test that the patient does the DNA test is sent to the lab. Those results are sent securely back to uh, your office. Um, at the same time, you've done the intake, you know, the client's giving you their medical history. And usually you've run like a nutribiosis or a expansive functional uh, nutrition lab, functional medicine lab is phenomenal. And sometimes there'll be an additional test if you decide that's warranted, which was in this case. So then I actually, um, you know, through the, the through the DNA is provided to me securely. So what I actually do is I read the, the DNA. I, I actually read the test and I read it blind. So I'm not blind, blind. I actually read what I'm seeing in the DNA without looking at the, the, the patient intake because I want to absolutely objective, you know, this is what I'm seeing. Um, so that's how I create the storyboard to start with. And then I'll go back and look at the patient intake it's because I'm trying, what I'm doing is, as you say, decoding this um, for you as a physician and your um, nutrition expert. So I'm actually downloading what I'm seeing, comparing it to the patient intake, the health history, and then I'll map it to the labs and say, oh my gosh, look at this, look at this, look at this. But additionally, then when you look at the lab intake, it gives me even more insight to say to you, hey, you might want to go down, you know, this path. You know, you might want to investigate this micronutrient imbalance or what we're seeing on the intake may be with a cognitive issue or whatever, patients complaining or insomnia, anxiety, I'm just pulling this out of the air. I may be able to look at the DNA to the lab results and say, this, this seems to correlate, but I'd also look here. And then I can, that is sent back to you as a physician. And then we will talk about it and then bing, off you go. <laughs> right. So then we do the nutritional counseling. So what, what I, I think is important is that, um, that we st uh, talk about the fact that we get 94 pages of data yeah. from the genomic information. So, and in this course that I took, um, no one gene locus determines the pathway, it's a, it's a marriage, if you would, it's a constellation of, of factors. Exactly. So that's, a, that's a level of complexity that, um, you know, it's working with you has been really a gift from that standpoint. I don't have to worry, I don't have to kind of figure that all out. It is a lot. You know, we yeah. ask, I was thinking about it earlier, we ask of our physicians to, to be magicians, to be miracle makers, you know, and what I realized, so first of all, when I'm working with you, I take the burden off of not being a miracle maker. But as you say, being able to compute through this kind of data, I'd say the other thing too, is we all have different gifts. And I think to be able to read genomic information from companies that provide clinically relevant information, which is the only companies we work with, um, you can either do it or you can't, you know, it's, 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 um, some people can think two dimensionally, some people can think three. And like you said, with, when you're decoding DNA or unzipping it, um, you're, you're thinking in, in multiple dimensions, 
as to how this impacts physiology. To ask a physician to sit and to do the two hours of work I might do um, is, um, it's not practical and it's not. Well, it's not I mean, the reality is that my, my acumen with biochemistry is not nearly at the same level as yours. I mean, you've been, this is something that, you know, you've been doing years and years of, of work with and staying totally up to date with the, with the literature and I'm looking at other things. My real passion is the biomechanics and the manual aspects of what I'm doing and the acupuncture and, and actually the energetics of what I do. I do a lot of intuitive work with people as well. But so having this, this is a real, um, this is a very exciting and data driven aspect of what I can provide for people and I'm, I'm really grateful about it. Oh well yeah and this of course is not we're talking about my work particularly I, I really want it but thank you I um, really want to kind of shine a light on how genomics is enlightening for you as a physician you know it's it's as one of the people we learn from said sometimes in medicine, it's like we're looking for a needle in a haystack, you know, and it, we, we have a lot of physicians who are great intuitives. He's like, you've seen something a hundred times, but everyone's unique. So I think this allows us to pinpoint the uniqueness and provides at least some direction as to where to look um, that usually isn't wrong, right? <laughs> Within the big right. scheme of things. Well, I mean, it's kind of amazing though, when you have, uh, you know, there's so many options in terms of food choices. And if you can find, uh, you know, and uh, it's wonderful to think that through your diet, you can have such a powerful effect. Instead of having to use uh, supplements or medications that tend to drive pathways past where the balance is. So what, what can we do to provide the substrates that allows the body to make sense of it and allows the body to create balance? It's, exactly. That's what I love about this. And then, of course, you have to make sure that their GI tract is functioning, that, you know, there aren't some other factors that are influencing. Them. And we see that time and time again. And, you know, uh, the more we work uh, with individual cases together, I I'm going to say almost 90% of the time the gut is involved. And there's a, a gene picture that we see that I can almost guarantee uh, we're going to see some dysbiosis now, if, whether it's the gene and whether it's our lifestyle are <laughs> two different conversations. But I, I, I'm almost think you can take a cohort of individuals that are healthy, uh, but have dysbiosis and they're going to have this homozygous gene or a number of heterozygous gene variants that predispose their gut to be um, imbalance and if you add poor food into that then you've got a royal mix yeah. <laughs> a mess so well it's interesting how i mean from a chinese medicine perspective given that i also do acupuncture you know we all have our achilles heel if you would you know an aspect of our physiology where if we're out of balance that's what shows up and there are people who have major sinus and gi issues or and or gi issues they tend to go together um, you know, and uh, so it's interesting to, I, I really hadn't heard that about the genomic uh, link of that particular homozygous that's maybe related to that. So, and it clearly seems to be a familial pattern. You know, there's a certain body habitus that's associated with that. It's, you know, certain kinds of personality uh, characteristics yeah. that go with that. So, so <laughs> So, you know, it's really pretty fascinating when you think about that. Well, and what I, go ahead. No, it's just cool that, that uh, we've come full circle in some respects in terms of being able to look at the basic science now and say, yeah, here's some real evidence instead of, you know, just kind of, um, you know, you, if you're, if you practice at anything long enough, you start to notice patterns. Right, exactly. Uh, no, uh, totally. And, uh, but to have something uh, that's more clear cut, I mean, we're using genomics for cancer therapy, we're using it for, uh, you know, now increasingly for mental health management. Yeah, I was going to say, so it's, important. It is, it is. The way our body processes medications or detoxifies things, it's really important. 
It is. And, you know, particularly on sort of the mental health spectrum, seeing so many times I'm looking at genomics and seeing these biochemical imbalances, you know, you, you of course know the Walsh protocol and he, uh, you know, it's taught us so much about this area of biochemistry, but, you know, I sit there and I look at the biochemical imbalances knowing that if we can just tweak them, we can help people just get back on it, get to a stable path in their lives. And it, it is as simple and as complex as uh, these biochemical imbalances. So it's, it's fascinating. We actually can go back to nutrition to correct so many of these aberrations or at least steer people on a better course. Um, yeah. <laughs> so your clients, your patients that have experienced DNA, do did they find value in it? I mean, obviously they're feeling better or they can see a better course forward, but what kind of feedback do you get from them? Um, I think that it's it's validating for for a lot of people. It it um, and it's clarifying in terms of its um, uh, direction. You know, I think that a lot of people try diets mm -hmm. and they don't get anywhere. Um, so if it, if they have obesity issues or if there's a concern about um, Alzheimer's, family history of Alzheimer's, which is a big concern. And especially, you know, we have a huge population of people that are our age, so to speak, who are moving into kind of that precursor stage. Mm -hmm. well, if, you can, if you can address that nutritionally and you have some real data that points to that, it reinforces it. I think, you know, like, you know, sometimes we just need to be convinced. We need to have hard data to really make it to it's decide, so okay, this is real. And I, I really should take care of that. Or, you know, I, it just, I, I mean, you know, you, if you have three choices to eat and they're equally yummy, your habit is one that isn't very good. It's not very, um, uh, you know, healthy for you. And another that is much more. <laughs> she disappeared. She'll be back. <laughs> Sorry, we've got some noise in the background. Um, then, then um, you know, it's great to to know that if I make this choice, it's I I'm going to serve myself better in the long and time. understand why. You know, and I think right. that's I'm going to take that in my field and in, in nutrition that. Sometimes we haven't done a very good job of explaining to people how food functions in your body. This is the why behind broccoli or onions or turmeric. And it's not, you don't just give it a label and say, it'll make you feel better. It's non inflammatory. For what? You know, what does that mean? So um, I agree with you that genomics is really validating. And, and I'm amazed that every day I'm looking at I'm going to step up for one second. Okay. Hey, by the way, why she stepped out, <laughs> that picture that you see there is painted by, I, I just love it. It's painted by Mary Jo's daughter. It's absolutely. Yes, it's my daughter's a painting. Incredible. I'm so, gosh, can she do that? Can she duplicate that? You can't ask an artist to duplicate <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but anyway, I was talking, a little a diversion there, a little detour. Um, I was talking about, you know, every day when I look at a, a, a DNA report, I'm looking at a, a data. I'm looking at um, information, how a company is reported out, and then we look for patterns. You know, basically, I feel like like that painting, I'm painting the story of somebody's life um, onto a, a sheet of paper. And it literally, as we start to look at that, we're able to say, well, this may be why you're experiencing A, B, and C. And this over here is why we need to shore up, yeah, like your folate or zinc. Uh, that might be one of your imbalances. So, and when you start to talk, as you you guys do in, in nutrition counseling and counseling with the patients, it's like you said, it's very validating because first of all, it says, we think we have a path forward, some explanations for you. Um, and we can, and this is you, you know, this is you as a person, you're not imagining why you're sore or whatever. Your body, you know, soreness or these um, symptoms are a, an outward cry for help because your body's out of balance and it manifests in so many different ways and genomic information takes the the guesswork out of what's wrong and at least gives us a direction to look um, biochemically so i can't i can't say biomechanically <laughs> i can't answer that but biochemically i can 
Well, I mean, and it's, it's a big part of the epigenetics of what's going on. The other aspect of things is, are you getting good rest? Mm -hmm. Do you have balance in your life in terms of work and play? Are, what's the quality of your relationships? You know, um, you know, are you getting enough activity? Uh -huh. You know, and rest, balance with rest. So, you know, those are all part of the clinical picture and part of what needs to be discussed when somebody's having issues. So, you know, but and but a, a, the thing that I would say, my medical training really did not prepare me for nutritional counseling. No, we and had my experience working with a typical dietitian has been somewhat unsatisfying. It's it's been a little bit black and white and not particularly useful. Right. So it's great to have a, a more of a functional approach more data that directs it, and to be able to individualize it based on that person's preferences. It, which is really important because there's lots of options out there. As long as you know what the nutritional goal is, there's plenty of options. So right. you have a fantastic nutrition expert that works with you, doubles as your, your coach, right? So um, she's amazing to work with. So all three of us will huddle and off Alexis goes, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah she's, she's, I'm very fortunate. I have a great team. You do. Really do. Yeah. So genomics will be part of your practice moving forward, I assume. For those absolutely, a absolutely. And uh, there's, uh, I have some friends that are in different places, so I'm trying to decide: do I do this for friends, or do I hook them up with people who are maybe a little bit more local to them? But um, you know, that's. But I, it's it's really thrilling to be able to do this work mm -hmm. and. I find, I have found that nutritionally, my life has been turned around by paying attention to these things as well. It's yeah. clear that, you know, if I, if I have a lot of glue, sugar, for example, I am inflamed. If I really have a diet that has more of the, you know, the master ingredients that, that we talk about, the turmeric, the fish oil, the more of a, a range of, of vegetables and fruits and you know, more, less grain emphasis, less carb emphasis, then I feel a lot better. And it's great to be able to share that with other people and, and see what it meant and have them experience the benefit of that as well. Yeah, yeah. I think so much of what we're trying to rebuild is people's innate uh, sort of contact with their innate palate, innately who they are. And once they can, you can rebuild that relationship it's a game changer. And for some people, I think Mary Jo, they've never known, you know, they have never known what great food tastes like or what they're supposed to eat. Uh, it's just a pro byproduct of our culture potentially. So it's yeah, a lot of teaching, true. but your DNA doesn't lie. It gives you the greatest path forward. And so it's, it's amazing. We have a unique relationship with how we work um, with your patients. So, um, so thank yeah, you. And, and it's a real gift. Oh, <laughs> it is. So anyway, if you're listening in, so Mary Jo, as you can tell, she's an amazing physician. So Mary Jo Fishburne, thank you. MD, Towson, Maryland, look her up. Uh, thank you, Mary Jo. <laughs> we do DNA work. Mary Jo, thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care.